Welcome to this Coin Now special edition of Coin Six News, online streaming everywhere. Thanks so much for joining us this afternoon as we prepare for yet again another round of the summer heat to once again return to much of the Pacific Northwest. I'm meteorologist Josh Kozar. We appreciate you joining us as we prepare for yet again another active weekend of weather. Of course, this underway is the month of August does just the same. So really seeing a lot of activity potentially ramping up as not only do we deal with the high heat once again, but also that potential uh, for some thunderstorm activity as the wildfire season continues to scorch much of the landscape here across the Pacific Northwest, Northern Oregon, and their Eastern Oregon, Northern California, everyone here across the West is feeling the impacts of this situation. So uh, right now, if you want to ask any questions, comments, uh, feel free to do so either on the Facebook Live, our YouTube channel as well, Coin6, and we're also live on TikTok. So I uh, appreciate all of uh, the comments, questions, and concerns, and we'll try to get them answered for you here on Coin Now, the special edition as we yet again prepare for an uptick in activity here across the Pacific Northwest as the temperatures climb. The muggy conditions do just the same, and we also expect to hold on to a better chance of seeing some wildfire activities. The thunderstorm potential starts to ramp up as well. So I'm going to give you a grand tour here across the Pacific Northwest. You can see those hazy skies once again returning uh, to much of our area. The cloud coverage still out along the coast, but at the top right-hand corner of your uh, image that you see, that's downtown Portland from the Hotel uh Hotel Indigo Kirkland Tower camera from the Vancouver waterfront and you can really kind of see that haze off in the distance So we'll be discussing exactly where our air quality sits now where it could potentially be going as we work our way uh, Pretty much through the next several days as we continue to see the hot and dry conditions ramp up So our temperature is already on the toasty side you see out towards the east those temperatures climbing already back up into the mid to upper 90s, 80s along the I-5 corridor, and 60s and 70s along the coast. This is significantly nicer than where we were just yesterday, climbing back up close to the triple-digit mark for the Willamette Valley. Even the coastline managed to pick up on some temperatures into the 80s, definitely something we don't often see out along the coastline but nonetheless it is going to be on the toastier side for us as we're already up into the 80s now i want to talk about dew point as well our dew point temperatures are right around 62 degrees or so in the portland metro area 70 out towards tillamook and even out towards the east they're relatively high this is all really good news because uh, this helps to decrease that potential for wildfire activity as you just have moisture in the atmosphere but it definitely makes it feel a little bit more on the uncomfortable side for much of our area. So as we see a lot of these dew point temperatures rise, that's going to make it feel even warmer out there. So our feel like temperatures, even though our air temperature is in maybe the low 80s for some of us, we're talking about nearly 90 degrees out towards Salem. Tillamook at 68, the Dow's 97, Pendleton just the same. Look at Baker City already at 103. So the summer sizzle is on here across the Pacific Northwest as we see these hot temperatures uh, once again return. I'm going to go ahead and just jump on YouTube real quick, make sure no one's having any questions, comments, or concerns. Uh, and again, on Facebook, you can also uh, get the latest information, and I'll make sure that I'm checking that periodically throughout our uh, live Coin Now newscast as we got a lot of different avenues. This is a great way for you to be part of the conversation. Instead of me just talking at you, let's go ahead. Let's discuss why things are the way they are in the weather world as we prepare to still hold on to those hot and, yes, muggy conditions as, again, those heat indices or the feel-like temperatures already approaching 90 degrees as we round out the 2 o'clock hour this afternoon. Let's go ahead and jump forward and uh, take a look at some of the National Weather Service heat alerts that are in effect. So the darker red or the maroon shaded color, that's where we are currently seeing excessive heat warnings. Those are likely going to be taking us through the rest of this evening. Those are all out to the east. But you'll notice the orange, those are heat advisories. So parts of Coos, Douglas County, out towards the southwest corner of the state, and of course out east of the mountains, the high terrain where it's a little bit cooler. It further east, so Bend, Pendleton, all those locations still expecting dangerous temperatures. We could be seeing those temperatures climb back up into the triple-digit mark yesterday, clipping at the heels 
up almost 110 degrees. So uh, nothing to shy away from as the fire danger, the red flag warnings just continue to expand. Earlier today, before we did our new newscast, it was the central regions of the state that were only under that potential, now encompassing much of the south central, southeastern sections. That's all where the fire threat really starts to ramp up as we work our way into the weekend. That's due to the gusty winds. We will see the return of some low relative humidity values. Again, uh, those are all going to be east of the Cascades. And that's where we have the potential for some dry lightning to start spread brand new wildfires as that threat does continue. So something to keep a very close eye on. Thankfully, the wind's behaving themselves out of the west at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. And oh, I'm actually just going to go back because uh, the National Weather Service, as we're live here on COIN, now just extending it a little bit further to the north. I would not be surprised if the entirety of eastern Oregon is under some sort of red flag warning as we work our way through the next uh, several days. So that is a very real potential as the lightning concern still remains alive and well. In addition to that, air quality still suffering out towards the south central, southeastern sections, Douglas, Lane County under that as well as several fires continue to scorch the uh, central and south central regions of the Cascades. That's where you want to limit your time spent outside. You can see with the image below me, uh, if you're joining us on the Facebook Avenue, the YouTuber coin.com, that's where you can see those hazy skies out towards the Mount Hood Meadows area. Definitely it, it closing in on much of our area, but thankfully the mountains kind of act like a blockade, stopping it from working its way into the I-5 quarter. So that is the good news. So uh, just some of our weather headlines here as we take a live look out towards Seaside as well. Uh, Portland's latest heat wave, it's just going to continue to keep a tight grip on not only the Pacific Northwest, but much of the western half of the uh, area as well. And uh, we are expecting to see a bit of a cool down here and there. It's going to be closed in with some of those muggy conditions that are going to be uh, impacting us as well. And also, we, we got to talk about that fire concern that still remains across our region. So, uh, again, just another live look out over downtown Portland on this Friday afternoon. You can see the haze there off in the distance. Thanks to our Subaru of Portland camera, the clouds, they're kind of in the mix of those hazy conditions as we currently sit at about 84 degrees out towards PDX. Winds out of the west northwest at about 8 and our sunset time 836 this evening. A closer snapshot of those current temperatures across the Portland metro area. If you're just now joining us on this coin now special edition on Facebook, YouTube, coin.com, and also on TikTok. We'd love to have your questions, comments, and concerns about the fire danger and the increased heat that we're seeing across our area. So these are the current air temperatures. It could potentially even feel closer to 90 degrees in many cases. Bethany already approaching that, just the same with Troutdale. So uh, the high heat, it's already here and it's here to stay. As our forecasted high later this afternoon into the evening, getting back up into the low to mid 90s, 70s along the coast and out towards the east. Yep. The summer sizzle is on as we are talking about triple digit numbers once again. Here's a bit of an interesting graphic. So right now, this is our comfort <laughs> index. So how comfortable does it actually feel out there? Not very comfortable at all. We are seeing the high temperatures, the high humidity. It just makes it feel muggy and sticky out there. So why is it that we actually see that impact our, our feel like conditions? Well, that's all because of our ability to sweat, evaporative cooling. So as your body produces sweat, it evaporates, it helps cool you. That's in a dry scenario. We have so much moisture in the atmosphere right now here across the Pacific Northwest that we're not able to add extra water to the atmosphere. It's already saturated. So that means when our bodies sweat, it's unable to evaporate and help cool us. Again, the evaporative cooler. So without that, we just get sweaty and hot and that sweat doesn't go anywhere. It sits on our body. So that's what makes it feel so much hotter and maybe even more uncomfortable. And as we kind of push this through the next 24 hours, you can kind of see it dancing around our, our sweet zone, the Goldilocks zone, if you will. That's really kind of situated right there in the center of our index. It does fall back to that by the time we get to this evening, early tomorrow morning. Those are the cooler parts of the day. But you'll notice a lot of the time we spend in the hot and humid conditions, and that's where we will likely stay, not only for the rest of today, but as we work our way into Saturday as well. So uh, just keep that in mind if you are sensitive to the high humidity, high heat, which many of us are. We're not used to it here in the Pacific Northwest, seeing the mixture of both. So uh, take precaution. Use the AC if, if it's accessible to you. 
Also, staying hydrated, taking frequent breaks indoors or in shaded areas are going to be your best case. Now, we've already had our fair share of the excessive heat so far this year. We are talking about 15 days of 90 degree heat. Folks, to put it into perspective, if you're maybe watching elsewhere from the Portland area, we only see about 13 days in the 90s here in the Pacific Northwest. If this is not a direct correlation to climate change, uh, it's hard to pick out anything else. 15 days in the 90s, three days in the triple digits. We almost hit triple digits again just yesterday. And I want to take you back, if I can find it easily enough, uh, the month of July here in Portland. This is just a snapshot of how frequent the 90s, the 100s, have become here across our area. We hit 92 degrees on the 4th of July, 99 on July 5th. We also saw that uh, back on uh, July 6th. Then we hit the century mark for the first time this year on July 7th. All of these are also record-breaking days, 102 for the 8th, 104 for the 9th. So these have just been uh, in abundance, and that's why it's so surprising when we've already seen three triple-digit days, and on average, at best, on a hot year, we typically only see one 100-degree day. So these hot temperatures definitely a, a big catalyst to starting and increasing that wildfire potential that we've seen here across the Pacific Northwest as of late. So as far as what's causing all of this and the hazy conditions, because we have to add that into the mix as well, high pressure out towards the Southwest, that's really impacting us here across our area. The winds around the center of the high, where, where the hot is currently located, that's where we are seeing the hottest of the temperatures. So the desert southwest, the four corners regions, the central plains. But all of that desert southwest air is funneling up along the coast, grabbing the moisture as it does so, moves its way back into western Oregon and Washington, and it's also grabbing a lot of the wildfire smoke that's down towards northern California, funneling it right up into the valley locations. And not to mention our fires that are still burning out towards eastern Oregon and parts of eastern Washington, Idaho, Montana, the whole west, unfortunately, dealing with something that's become all too familiar for us uh, during the summer months. So really seeing the heat build. And, and you'll notice as we put this into motion, the hay slowly tries to push its way just a little bit further off to the east as high pressure does just the same. It weakens ever so slightly. But that ridge where the jet stream, the gatekeeper between the cold air to the north and the warm air to the south, continues to stay over much of the western half of the country. Welcome to August here in the northern hemisphere and specifically over the United States where the hot and hazy center of the high pressure system settles into parts of southern Colorado, New Mexico, and Texas. That will uh, still keep the hazy skies overhead but also slowly help to dry us out by the time we get sunny. So likely going to start to see those humidity values go down ever so slightly. So uh, that is the good news and something we can look forward to. All right, we're talking about smoke now too. You can see the image below me, the hazy skies. Uh, let me see if I can flip it over to another image of Mount Hood where you can really kind of see all of that smoke and haze uh, right below me. Uh, Mount Hood, not as crystal clear as it typically is, but nonetheless, still having that potential for the wildfire smoke in the upper layers of the atmosphere where Mount Hood lives uh, to definitely impact our air quality. So this is two o'clock this afternoon. We'll put it into motion. You can see it remains thick out towards the east. That's where the air quality is still being uh, impacted the most. And then we slowly, by the time we work our way closer to Sunday, slowly start to see some of that wildfire smoke peel its way out of our area. So there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Again, that is if there are no brand new wildfires that start and spread uh, with our hot and dry conditions. So air quality impacts definitely going to be felt here across the south central, southeastern, eastern Oregon, uh, falling back anywhere to the moderate to very unhealthy, if not even the hazardous conditions. This has been something we've been seeing over and over again. Earlier, we talked about how there's those air quality alerts in effect until further notice. So we are in the long haul of this, unfortunately as those uh, hot, dry, and smoky conditions remain. Our current air quality across the region, a bit of a snapshot for you. We'll go ahead and just take this full suit. Uh, you can see it in its entirety. Uh, moderates. We've been falling back out towards the Oak Ridge area, back down uh, to the very unhealthy, hazardous conditions. So if you are very sensitive to the smoke, the haze, you definitely want to take precaution, limit your time spent outside, do all the things necessary that, that you know uh, yourself the best to 
to really kind of protect yourself from the smoke and haze. And we'll go ahead and just kind of zoom in to the Portland metro area where we had fallen back earlier uh, to those moderate conditions. That's still a very real potential as we move our way into the afternoon and evening. But you can see the live look out towards the Vancouver waterfront thanks to the Hotel Indigo Kirkland Tower camera uh, where it is hazy out there despite actually seeing good air quality. Now some of that haze could actually be the moisture that's in the air and making it feel so uncomfortable and muggy. That too, uh, not a big surprise for us as we work our way through this Friday evening. So what does that mean for our sunsets? Maybe our sun rises tomorrow. Yep, another round of those sunny conditions with a bit of a red hue. That's because it, when the sun sits low on the horizon, it has to cut through so many different layers of the atmosphere in addition to the wildfire smoke. And the wildfire smoke does a really good job of kind of filtering out all of the different colors of the wavelength, except for red. That it does allow to really kind of work its way into our area. So uh, that is definitely on the docket with those red sunset alerts definitely in store for us as we move our way through uh, the next several evenings and early morning hours. So uh, again, just another live look uh, at downtown Portland below us, the hazy, hot conditions. We're just going to see much of the same over the next several days. Our average temperature this time of year, 84 degrees, well above that by 10 degrees this afternoon as we expect to climb back up into the mid-90s. Saturday, though, we have the potential to start to cool down. That's something we can look forward to. Keep in mind, the humidity is still going to be hot. It's still going to be on the warm side, muggy, kind of sweaty, sticky side for us. Uh, great adjectives as we continue to move through this very hot and uh, very active summer season for us here across the Pacific Northwest. We're back up into the 90s, though, Sunday into Monday, falling to the 80s, Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, so that roller coaster ride, it just continues. Now, as far as our future cast goes, you'll see that we stay dry through the I-5 quarter. The marine layer moves its way on and offshore, as it always does. That's where the humidity is still going to be at its highest. Uh, and then as far as the Cascades go, that's where things start to get interesting for Saturday. You also notice that the Portland metro area starts to see increasing clouds. That will pump the brakes on the temperature from warming up too significantly, too rapidly. So those clouds are good. The rain, yes, a potential for us. But it also poses a bit of a threat for the lightning concern starting spreading brand new wildfires because if a lot of these are uh, low precipitation LP storms, uh, that has the potential to really make things gusty. The fires that are already burning could change unpredictably in where they move. So that is also a very big concern. So uh, be mindful, stay weather aware as that thunderstorm activity, especially if you're maybe doing any hiking over the Cascades or points east, that, that's going to be a, a good note. Now, Sunday morning, all is calm and quiet. Again, we see the sunshine return for the I-5 corridor. And then we also expect to pick up on maybe another rumble of thunder, a bolt of lightning, gusty conditions over the mountains and out towards the east once again. So here's our snapshot of where the garden variety thunderstorms have the potential to work their way back into to our area for Saturday. Also expecting to see that take us into Sunday. It encompasses much of the I-5 corridor, eastern sections out towards Idaho, Montana. So it's not just us here in Oregon and southeast uh, Washington or eastern Washington. We're talking about Idaho, Montana, all kind of having that same fear as we move our way through uh, the next several days. So th that is a, a very real potential for us as the thunderstorm activity remains. And that is not great news when we were talking about the wildfire situation across the Beaver State. Multiple fires, in many cases very large fires, mega fires in many cases, scorching our landscape. You can see it's primarily over the Cascades and east. We like to, at least for Portland's sake, for wildfire smoke, keep it out of our area. We would ideally like a lot of these to wash themselves away. You might think back 20, 30 years ago, wildfire season wasn't necessarily like what it is today here in the Pacific Northwest, and that's due to those hot, dry conditions that unfortunately have once again returned. So for tonight, here in the city, expecting to see those temperatures slide back into the mid-60s. We're also expecting to see uh, a few more clouds increase across the region as well. It will be warm, it will be hazy, and it will also be muggy out there. And that's going to take us into tomorrow as well. So let me take the seven-day forecast full so you can get it in its entirety. Expecting to see the hot, dry, sunny conditions just continue.
to take us through the next several days. And uh, that's really going to be something that is majorly impactful for us. And we are going to be cooling down ever so slightly on Saturday. The increased cloud coverage, 88 degrees or so. Also expecting to see those 90s make a quick return as early as Sunday. That's going to be added in with the humidity, although I do anticipate the humidity to slide back ever so slightly by the time we get into Monday and Tuesday. 80s, mid to upper, still above average as we work our way into Tuesday, Wednesday, and even Thursday with, once again, the return of the 90s. So the summer season, the month of August, really starting off on a hot note for us here across the Pacific Northwest. So that's going to go ahead and do it for this Coin Nile special edition as the wildfire threat and the thunderstorm activity remains. Of course, you can always get the latest information by watching Coin6 News starting at 4 o'clock with myself. It will be Todd and Elizabeth Din helping to uh, share all of the latest news and headlines, where you can also find all of that information always readily available right now at Coin.com. We'll leave you with that. I hope you have a great rest of your Friday and also enjoy the rest of your hot and toasty weekend here across the Pacific Northwest.